I'm super, super stoked to have Mark Brand with me. An incredible social entrepreneur changing the world literally on the ground. Mark, so stoked to have you here. I'm amped to be here, man. Do me a favor. Tell us a little bit, like your like CV is like endless. Like the, the amount of work you're doing is staggering. Tell us probably in like a few sentences, like what are you, what are you doing? Like what is, the, what is the, the essence of Mark Brand? Sure, and I think I'm in great company. I think like we, just to segue real quick, we get intimidated by folks who get introduced to the big stage and uh, the keynotes here have been amazing. You're like, does this, humanitarian this, was on the ground for Bosnia, like all of this crazy stuff. And I think that when you're doing something that you're really passionate about, your CV just generally builds around it, right? So my work specifically is focused on food systems, system change, um, using design thinking to attack problems of homelessness, marginalization, uh, poverty, and hunger. So I'm here mm. specifically speaking Yesterday I did a keynote on uh, the future of food wow. and I took a different uh, approach to it. I wasn't talking about eating crickets, although I love these guys. I was talking about how food is our last best hope to continue to engage our community as we get more and more wrapped by digital technology. Say more about that. Yeah, I'd love Explain to. Explain that. Like, give me like the 90 second, of course, you like, unfortunately you can't see the whole keynote thing like right now, but sure. give me the 90 second. Why is that? Why do you like hold this as a, as a anchor stone of your work? Sure. We will always have to eat until they're putting MREs directly in our veins, which of right. course already happens. Uh, most of us are going to sit at a dinner table, but I feel like we've been really disconnected from the experience of food. Mm -hmm. So I'm a restaurateur, a cook by trade, and uh, I have multiple businesses that do this, especially in the depth of community, and I see the success around people sitting together, talking about issues, etc. Not the kid with the plate and the iPad being uh. distracted. So most of the great lessons I've learned in my life have been at a dinner table, yeah. have been at a bar, uh, have been with people interacting directly. The second that we remove that last piece of our connectivity, the rest of us live a lot of the time digitally, especially if we're traveling consistently. Sure. We're living on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, every other social media platform via text message, WhatsApp, via Skype, via Google Hangouts. I want to hang out, share food, and make sure that we stay connected to each other. And I think this is the way that we can really embrace that. Like, go sit in a park, bring a picnic basket, turn your devices off, and huh. talk about what's wrong with the world. I like that a lot. We spoke when we when we just got like sitting down, and we spoke about uh, you seeing Peter Diamandis um, on stage mm -hmm. talking about abundance and the future of like uh, technology enabling us, hopefully, potentially in the future, to get to a world of abundance. We had a really interesting, like, kind of like a side note, like a like a, a different take on it. Um, yeah. I would love to dig a little bit into this. So can you, for the benefit of our viewers who weren't part of us, you know, sure. shooting, shooting back and forth, like, yeah. give us your, like, your take on it and then I, I would love to dig into it. Yeah, well, Peter's brilliant. There's no question. None of us would be sitting here today if Peter wasn't as brilliant Absolutely. as he was and as forward thinking as he was. But that aside, sometimes we make statements that are sweeping and I have a lot of triggers. I have mm -hmm. a lot of triggers because of the work I did. And when he said, you know, from 1820 until present, we've seen a reduction in poverty of 70, 73%, I think is what he said. And all the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I was like, that's just simply not the case in frame. So to reframe that, 1, 1 billion-ish people lived on the planet at that time. Right. 1.3 billion live in extreme poverty right now. 3 billion live on less than $2.50 a day. Right. And even more, <laughs> I think it gets crazy to like 80% of the population live on less than $10. So if that's abundance, I miss, don't understand the definition, right? So I just think that it's really important to keep that frame, not to get caught up in this room is extremely privileged. Sure. And we need to continue to focus that privilege to bring everybody with us. If we're saying there's going to be more than enough food, there's more than enough water, I saw some incredible stuff. I mean, I told you I had my worldview changed on medical and, and my own condition. I think it's really important to think when you step out of here, and you look at the people in the Tenderloin and the Mission who are sleeping literally on mattresses outside these doors, do they see abundance? Do they feel that the world is abundant for them? I don't think so. And I think we need to be focused on them because we're good. Right. We can continue to do the tech thing and we can continue to move forward as a planet and really fix all of our, our pieces a la ozone layer. But if we don't focus on the most marginalized, is that gonna be fun for us at the end of it? Are we gonna be happy with ourselves? And I say no. Universally, no. Let me ask you a question. So, um, so I experienced this being here in the city, and I live a little bit further down in the in the South Bay. But like, you know, every time I'm coming to the city, I'm just like overwhelmed, truly overwhelmed by the homelessness, 
issue we have in San Francisco. Right. And there's some specific reasons around this, of course, because the city is very welcoming to homeless people. The climate is probably welcoming for people sleeping on the streets. So, you know, I get why there's probably more homeless people in this city than in other cities. Okay. Right. And it is a really hard problem to like just confront. Right. Sure. So I do as much as I can as a human being to be human to these people, right? And not just like see them as non-existing or, you know, a nuisance or whatever. Sure. How do we deal with that? How do we, like, on a personal level, I'm not talking, you know, like, how should the city deal with this, right. the country, you know, right. whatever. Right. Like, how do we as individuals, like, when we step out of these these, these halls here, right, like, mm -hmm. into the temple line, like, how do we deal with it? So, yeah, you hit three nerves for me. And, and one is, there absolutely is no us and them. Mm. There's just us. There right. is only us. Two, civic duty means the citizens of the city. It doesn't just mean our elected officials. It doesn't just mean our city. But the city of San Francisco is doing an amazing job. They set up a department specifically to engage homelessness 11 months ago. The team is incredible. I've met them all face to face. They're embracing technologies, admitting their flaws, really trying to do this thing. That's great. Mm -hmm. We have a civic duty as humans, as citizens of the planet, to engage people who are less fortunate than us. Right. I changed my worldview on that six or seven years ago specifically. And what was getting in my way, and I challenged people on this, was my ego. Hmm. I was scared that if I went to speak to somebody who was homeless, they might ask me for something that I couldn't give them. Now, I didn't have that in the front of my mind. It was in my subconscious, yeah. right? And it was, do you have, and if I was to say no, I would feel guilty. So me, 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 I, I, I. Right. Well, you know what? If you don't have it, you can simply say, I don't. But I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I wish oh. you the best and interaction. Homelessness is one of the biggest places of isolation. Right. So if you're in that state of isolation, just a handshake, a hello, an acknowledgement, an interaction that you're there is really important. Right. And then I think if it, you really care about it, there's so many great resources. We're across the street from Glide Church that's been around for 57 years helping with homelessness. The first gay marriage was there. They're a place of inclusion. There's places you can direct people to help them out. And then lastly, I've been working on a digital platform, which is a little outside of my scope, but to connect all of the people who have empathy, all of the agencies that homeless folks can't navigate or find, and everybody on the ladder of homelessness. The part about that is a lot of the people who are homeless are invisible. They're living in cars, they're crashing on couches, they're living in shelters. You're seeing the tip of a very, very, very big iceberg. So let me ask you a question. So we, we work a lot with entrepreneurs. There's a lot of entrepreneurs in this, uh, in this group here attending the, the summit. How would you, as an entrepreneur, being empathetic, caring about these issues, mm -hmm. how would you go about this? Like, what, what is, how do I connect with this? Yeah, and I think the best way is as a human is to set your tech aside for a second mm. and to step out and find out where you can fit into it. And the second part is there's other folks like me who are working on platforms who you can support. Right. You know, yesterday I got the, the chance to see a panel and one of the gentlemen on the panel said, I've created a two-page uh, executable document so it's a contract to be able to use X, Y, or Z. It's the simplest contract that was ever created on the internet. I was like, I need that for my platform. So I think us as a community will be developing the platform that I'm building. I'm not set in an office with a, a developer and right. a team like, Find somebody who's doing the work you align with, and this is so important. I care about people in poverty and humans specifically. Other folks right there care about hunger in Africa and in right. impoverished areas. They want to deliver stuff. Whatever you're passionate about is your genius. Mm. And bring your genius to the table. Don't bring, people come to me and say, can I help you cook? Right. And I always say, do you know how to cook? <laughs> yeah, right. And nine times out of 10, they say no. I'm like, uh, why would I want you to come cook if you don't know how? Right. I'm like, what do you actually do? And like, I'm a lawyer. Like, that's way more valuable to me right. than you chopping onions. I can find somebody <laughs> to chop onions. But if you can come and donate a, like an hour a month or two right. hours a month to legal, to somebody who really needs your genius, whether it's UX, whether it's entrepreneur mentorship, right. that's your gift. Give it to people who need it. I love that. Let me give uh, our audience a quick plug. Okay. How can they support you? Because you're on this show. You're right now here on air. Sure. You're doing amazing work. So. How do we support you? How do we like? How do we plug into your world and support your work? One hundred percent. So I am uh, on Instagram of all things at mark.brand, Mark with a K. 
my adventures are all there. The stuff that I'm doing is all there. I've focused on that platform in specific because I don't find that it gets me into a rabbit hole. And I love imagery. I'm a designer as well, and I love that space. Please come and hang out with me there, and uh, we can chat. Awesome. So Instagram is the place. It is. Mark dot brand. That's Mark right. with a K. Um, cool. Let me ask you a couple more questions. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about like your work and like your the view of the uh, of the world. Um, with everything you said, and you know, again, like in, in my own world, like going out on the streets of San Francisco, seeing the homelessness person as just one example of all the pressing problems sure. we have in the world. Are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future? Hugely optimistic. All right, why? Hugely optimistic. Empathy, my friend. I mean, empathy can save us, period. And people will be like, you're a crazy person and everything's going to explode. We're going to war with North Korea tomorrow. We, as humans, are built and hardwired to care about each other and be in community, period. Mm. I started a token project. I don't have one with me, um, but at my butcher shop and diner in the downtown east side of Vancouver, one of the largest open-air drug markets in North America, a place of mental illness, of disparity, of homelessness. Of, like, it's crazy there. I opened a business in the center of it. Mm. I started a project a few years afterwards because people kept saying, how can I help? Right. I was like, well, I don't want to create a solution that only wealthy people can help with, right, right, right. or only people from the middle class can help with. I want everybody to be able to participate. So I created a plastic token, and on it there's a pig that signifies the, the logo of my building. On the back it says sandwich. And so you can hand that to somebody in the street when they ask for money for they're hungry, when they say they're hungry, you hand it to them, they know the building, it's been there since 57, and they can come and redeem it, sit down at the diner, have a coffee, hang out, feel part of a community, because they are, Wow. or take it to go. And so when I launched it, I thought maybe two or three redemptions, right? Right. A day, and I'd be stoked because we have to talk to somebody when we hand yeah, them yeah, something. Yeah, totally. The first day was over 120. We cracked 100,000 this year. It's just skyrocketed to a point, and that's where my hope comes from. Huh. If people have to come all the way to my neighborhood to engage in this program, 90% of people do anyway, some do digitally, and then go out in the street and do this in a neighborhood that they wouldn't necessarily feel safe a lot of the time, which is a huge misnomer, then I got a lot of hope. There's only 631,000 people who live downtown Vancouver. If 100,000 people of that have participated because they care, yeah, we're good. We just need to give people channels to participate. Right. You saying, how can I help? That was a genuine ask. And if people can't get involved, how can we expect to secure our future together? We, we can't. So that's what my main focus for two years, here at the Stanford D School for a year, um, through the Think School of Leadership, I'm just laser focused on being able to connect us so we can actually connect. That is amazing. Um, let me take it one level up. I'm sure. curious, so that is the, how do I help as a person? Right. Uh, probably as my closing question, how do I help on a systems level? So how do I, like, I am sure there's a bunch of people out there right now watching you saying like, this is amazing. And, how do I create the token system? How do sure. I come up with that idea? Yeah. Right? Like, how do I embed this into my business, into my existing business? Sure. Like, how can we do this? So, two streams. One, do it. Um, we launched a token project here with a group that um, I helped to mentor out of Stanford Farm uh, called Farming Hope. You can redeem tokens and help people out who are cooking taquitos, et cetera, at the Ferry Terminal building on Wednesdays and I think Sundays. Good plug for those guys. I love you. Uh, and then secondary, be a part of hiring people who need the employment. Now let me be more specific there. In the service industry, we're right. experiencing a massive gap right now in skilled labor. Because kids were like, I could go be a cook for $15 an hour and work 12 hours a day, no thank you, I'm good on that. Right. I love to cook, but I don't love it that much. I'm gonna go code for Google. Yep. And so we have this huge gap. Instead of seeing that as a problem, I saw it as an opportunity to engage with people who have developmental disabilities, who mm. have mental illness, who are coming out of recidivism, et cetera, et cetera, and getting them into training programs and getting them to work. That's awesome. So turnover in the restaurant business is around 80% a year, or the service industry, everybody who's helping us here today, per annum, because people are off to right. another career. Right, right, right. That's incredibly expensive to people in the service industry to replace people and train them consistently. With people who are barriered, in any of those categories, turnover is less than 30%. They're not hunting for your job. Wow. You know, there's a whole different mind frame. And most importantly, the people who work for you outside of that get what you're doing and they turn over yeah, less. Absolutely. There's your impact. Get people off the street by giving them purposeful employment, something they care about. That's amazing. So it's two things. Do it <laughs> and get the right people involved, right? And like, one more. Do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Just go do it. On that note. Yes. Um, 
the thing you all should do is you go to Instagram right now, go to mark.brand, follow Mark, check out his stuff, see how you can help him, get inspired. I know you're also teaching, there's a whole bunch of like teaching methodologies around this. Yeah. Check that stuff out and go do it. Absolutely. Mark, thank you so much. It was an incredible pleasure. pleasure.